This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. go with another week of this uh, madness we call the uh, the ramble i'm alex bennett and i will be your host and you will get to see me in about 25 minutes from right now when we get to our citizens panel uh and we go until midnight tonight eastern daylight time right now it's about five minutes past uh, 10 o'clock on the east coast of the united states so if you want to figure out uh you know well wh- who we are what we are where we are just uh um, uh, you know, just figure that out. You can take, if you're in China, it's 12 hours difference. Okay. That I know. Ni hao. Anyway. Uh, hey, listen, uh, as we like to do occasionally on this program, we love to talk to a dear friend of ours. who's just great to hold a conversation with. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from lovely San Francisco, California, it's the music of Larry Bubbles Brown. From the smoky, flaming state of California. Yeah, is it still uh, still got smoke up there? Hmm? They still got a little. It's just uh, some amazing stories about all all these animals that got saved. So that uh, made me feel good. But there was a guy that had a uh, wild safari park outside Santa Rosa, and he uh, yes. the police firemen came and told him to get out, and he refused to leave, and he stayed. He's seventy seven. He stayed there, saved. Stayed there all night. He saved like just hundreds of animals. I know about that guy uh, because I used to know the person because she used to bring animals to the show all the time. Who was the PR director for like where was it? Africa USA? I've been out. In it's, it's called like Safari Sonoma Safari or something like that. They, yeah, they changed. Uh, well, no, 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 no. This was a, a uh, you know one of those amusement parks. Oh, that was the Marine World up in Vallejo. Uh, in Vallejo, yeah, I think so, right. Yeah. And they had lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And uh, yeah. she told me about this guy who took all the older animals and put them on land to graze. And these were lions and tigers and all these kinds of things. And they were just old, long-in-the-tooth animals. And I thought that was just a wonderful story. You know, yeah, this and, guy's a real hero. So. And this must be that guy. Yeah, yeah he's uh, 77. He stayed up all night, and he refused to leave. So. Yeah, yeah. So so are the fires pretty much out now? They're pretty much out now. They see uh, 5,000 5, homes are gone in Santa Rosa. Jeez almighty. They might, I guess they might be able to save the, uh, the place where we did the show, the Wells Fargo Center, is... Uh, badly burned but i think it's not totally gone so yeah it used to be called uh oh, luther burbank L- luther burbank and they changed mm-hmm. it to wells fargo they they changed it from a name of a historical figure in california they even have a town <laughs> named, some horrible corporation yeah they have a town named after him burbank california is named after mm-hmm. luther burbank and he was the uh, the wizard of flowers or something uh, and uh he um um uh, they, they change it to the to the Wells Fargo Center. It deserves to burn down. <laughs> we had a great show there, though. We had a great show. I did several shows up there, actually. It was uh, such a good place that uh, George Carlin did all his HBO specials. He taped those there. Yeah. So anyway, so um, uh, well, you know, I, I've, I've mentioned this any number of times. So I'm sure the audience is tired of hearing about it, but my. Uh, life was impacted because I almost lost everything. Oh, you had your storage up there. That's right. And the only, and everything around this storage facility burned to the ground except the storage facility. So uh, um, my stuff is safe. <laughs> <laughs> so we won. <laughs> I, can, I can attest to the virtues of this. And I just moved stuff into that new facility you know because i was paying like i don't know 350 bucks a month where i was and now i'm down to about 150 a month so life is is better but it, all of a sudden you know you got the fires and but a boom bada beam you know so. 
That's 5,000 homes. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of gigs, I would imagine, as well. A lot uh, of gigs up in smoke. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> along with your career. <laughs> My, well, that went up in smoke a long time ago. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, oh, you know what I was watching? You know, you work with Dana Carvey a lot. He, he yeah. He's yeah. the prime employer of Bubs Incorporated. <laughs> uh, and uh, they have a thing on Hulu. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just emailed me about that. He said, watch it. He said, it's really good. Yeah, it is good. It's really oh, you good. you saw it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's about his, what, eight episodes of shows uh, that went on ABC that were just, it was a massive, I can't, I don't want to say failure, because failure would mean that it had no value. Uh, it, 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 it was a failure uh, financially and ratings wise but it was a success from a creative standpoint and from a ethical standpoint yeah and, and the people that he had on the show we just went on to a pretty amazing career well i mean his his two main comics who did the sketches with him were stephen colbert and uh, uh steve uh, carell carell and uh, he had people, you know, writing for him. The head writer on the show was Louis C.K. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the what is it? The uh, Triumph, the insult comic dog. Oh, Smigel. Smigel uh, was the was the the head of, uh, I guess, writing, and also was also another performer on the show. So it was it was quite a show. But it was doomed from the beginning because the first sketch ever on that show was Bill Clinton breastfeeding. <laughs> and, it said like seven million people tuned out. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it wasn't just like he supposedly had himself um, surgically altered so he could breastfeed, and he had like teats like a pig. You know? <laughs> and maybe uh, not a good opening sketch, but um... yeah. Uh, and uh, it just it got blasted. It just got blasted from its first episode. Uh, by the time they got to the last episode, a lot of the reviewers who had said terrible things about it were saying great things about it. But you know they held to their they held to their beliefs so that that they could do you know really interesting stuff on television. And some of it was good, and some of it missed. But it it was. It was amazing that it existed at all, you know? Yeah, I think, well, Dana was uh, just coming off Saturday Night Live. He was so huge then, and uh, he kind of had a very wholesome attitude. Uh, maybe those things were a little too edgy for his uh, fans. Well, you know, he had a wholesome reputation. But if you and I remember um, uh, Dana, I mean, he was only wholesome because television is forced to be wholesome. Mm-hmm. But Dana was not necessarily a wholesome act. I mean, he was a, a, a somewhat edgy act. And, uh, you know, um, this seemed like the right thing to do to him. Plus, I think he wanted to blow away that, that you know, the trouble with Dana was as a comedian. And I always said that Dana had the biggest job of any comedian I ever knew. Because you can't be that cute and good looking and be funny. But he managed to do it, mm-hmm. and and that was the hat trick that he pulled off. So people didn't realize that he had this edge, because he would come out on stage and be edgy, and you see this what looks like a mannequin from Pennies, you know. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, I, yes, I know him pretty well. He he does have a dark side. So. Uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, and. Um, so I mean, but the, the you know you look at the stuff on the show. Some of it was very funny, and some of it was like I showed it to my wife in the shows because they're also running the shows as well, and she didn't like it. She didn't like the shows. I thought they were terrific. I think the the one of the highlights was Carell and and uh, Colbert doing waiters who are nauseated by food. <laughs> Have you ever seen I saw that? that in the review? They said that was funny. I mean, that is just ambrosia. 
when it comes to comedy. Um, but they, you know, they just had a, they had a wonderful attitude on this show, and um, it lasted eight episodes, and then the network canceled it. But you know, it was also it was I think it was a problem that Dana had, and a di- problem that the network had. The network's problem was they thought Dana was this wholesome comic, and they were going to get this. They really got a big deal by getting this guy from Saturday Night Live, this cute little guy, you know, mm-hmm. and then all America's going to love Dana Carvey on ABC. But they didn't understand Dana, and they didn't understand what Dana was going to bring to the table, and they didn't expect any of it, you know. So right. they gave him free reign, huge budget, let him just go crazy, and after eight episodes, they canceled it. Um. And they didn't. It was it was their fault. It was his fault because HBO offered him a deal and he didn't take it. Mm-hmm. And if he had gone to HBO with this series, he might have gone eight nine seasons with it. Yeah, that probably would have worked over there. Yeah, I mean there you know there are venues now that that exist that that people um, uh, have to um, uh, you know. Um, explore and like everybody's going over to uh, Netflix you know that just seems to be the place du jour to go to Netflix uh, is like trying to corner the market on comedy yeah and they may be doing a terrible job of it because while they're cornering a lot of the big comics like Seinfeld and Schumer and and so on they aren't cornering a lot of great comics because there are a lot of terrible mediocre comics that they're corralling as well they are yeah and i just worked with a guy this week uh in san diego and arena felipe esparza yeah and he decided he went with hbo and did a special for them so he's one of the guys that didn't go to netflix and he's hilarious yeah uh, but I mean, so you know. Uh, but they're just there. Yeah, they're throwing huge money at people that have too much money already. <laughs> well, they have huge money to spend. They do. You know, I mean, you got to realize these are guys with worldwide almost a hundred million subscribers worldwide mm-hmm. at an average cost of about ten bucks a month. That's a lot of money coming in. You know, that's a that's a billion a month. So they've got a lot of fuck you money to throw around. Um, I mean, I'm getting a little tired of Netflix because whenever they they get something, they call it a Netflix original. And like this Star Trek that CBS is doing, they have it on on, in Europe on, on Netflix. And you know what they say about it? A Netflix original. What do you mean Netflix original? It's a CBS original. Yes. You had nothing to fucking do with it. You maybe just paid some money so you could get exclusive rights to it in Europe. And 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 then I uh, there's some other show and it goes a Netflix original and you start watching it. It's like you know got my my, my, my wife started watching this Turkish series. And she started watching it, right? And it says Netflix original, when really it was like a Turkish production and they just sold it to Netflix and Netflix slaps on Netflix original. And she starts watching it and I said, well, how many episodes is this? She says, I don't know, maybe 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, something like that. Who knows? So I checked to see how many episodes it is and it's 65 episodes. Wow. She watched all 65 of them in Turkish. (laughs) And really what it was was a Turkish-Spanish novella, basically. (laughs) Telenovela, you know. Just horrible. And uh, she watched all 65 episodes. You know, she's not a young spring chicken. What a way to spend your life approaching death. You know, is to watch a 65... Ep- I, mean, I watched 65 episodes of Breaking Bad, but that was Breaking Bad. <laughs> you know, so I, I get a little mad at Netflix because everything's a Netflix original, and I think they've watered down the the uh, the cachet. 
Because whenever I saw that they were doing something original, I I immediately gravitated towards it. Like they did all this Marvel comic stuff, which was terrific, most of it. And, um, you know, so it, it, what the hell, you know. Uh, but they are literally grabbing all the comics, I- I- except the good ones. Uh, was Dana on there? Did Dana have yeah, a show? Yeah, Dana did one earlier this year. Yeah. But, uh... So, you know, it's uh, – and, and, and Rob Schneider – as a series, a Netflix original series. The Real Rob, yes. The Real Rob. Uh, and, um, and not a bad show, by the way. Very good show. No, I, I, hear, I still haven't seen it. I heard good things about it, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, he was trying something different, too. However, I, I talked to him, and I, I, he, uh, I, I said, so are you... I, uh, you know, are you making money out of this thing? He says, well, they pay me back for the production, but not every penny. Wow. So he's putting money out of his pocket. He put, Yeah, he put a lot of his own money up for this. Uh, the last episode of this season, the last 10 minutes, I think it is, of the, of, of the last episode, he went to, to uh, Croatia or someplace like that where they had a symphony orchestra, and he hired Ennio Morricone. You know who he is. You know, he won the Academy Award last year for best uh, music for the Hateful Eight and mm-hmm. did things like The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, How the West Was Won, Once wow. Upon a Time in America. I mean, he to me, he's one of the greatest yeah, movie yeah. composers of all time. He wrote 10 minutes of music. And, and of course, he didn't do it for free. Rob no. paid him. So Rob bought and paid for 10 minutes of any old Morricone music at the end of his episode. I didn't know that. That's amazing. Yeah, and it, and it, and it works to good effect too. It's meant to be a dramatic moment where he suddenly comes to a realization, and he got all of a sudden they go from this wacky little music they've been using as the background music for this show, and all of a sudden it's this full sim- symphony orchestra, sixty-five pieces. Rob said, "Jesus, they paid for every penny of it." I gotta see this. I'm, it, that might have been the budget for the whole series. I would think so, yeah. You know? So, I mean, uh, but, uh, you know, the, uh, people are going to, to, to Netflix if they, can, if they can get on Netflix, but some of them are now starting to go to Hulu. Sarah Silverman has a series on Hulu. But none of them are saying, hey, let's go to NBC, CBS, ABC. Let's go. To, some of them are, say, no, are not saying, let's go to HBO. Uh, so what's what's going to happen to broadcast TV or well, cable TV? Uh, broadcast TV is uh, it, it, there is no broadcast TV if you think about it for a second, because most of your local stations are on cable. Most people in their homes have cable of one sort or another, whether it's a satellite dish or whether it's a cable or whether it's fiber or whatever. Uh, very few people are actually putting up an antenna and watching over-the-air broadcasting. So that's kind of gone, you know. And the only reason, and this is the stupid reason, maybe maybe 20% of the American public is watching TV off an antenna, all right? Mm-hmm. And it's for that 20% that they keep television so squeaky clean because they have to abide by the rules of the FCC. So... Where because this stuff is going out on uh, on on cable for the most part, and there are no rules there where language is concerned or taste of material, they still have to serve out their broadcast over the air masters, and that's where broadcast television is having problems. That's why CBS has CBS All Access now, and they're doing special programming for it, like the Star Trek series. And I'm sure they, I, I think maybe on the Star Trek series, I heard a four-letter word uh, on one of the episodes. So, you know, it, 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 is television still around in its traditional sense? And the answer is probably no. You know, how is CBS and NBC and ABC going to compete with HBO or Netflix or any of these people? You know. Sure. 
And they used to, God, I was reading, they, Seinfeld was getting like 30, 35 million viewers, and like they say a show can stay on the network now if it gets like 3 million. So. Yeah, it can do it with, it can do it with about 3 million. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't, how can they, how can they afford to uh, produce shows? Like their well, ad revenue can't be the same if the audience is that small. The number one, I think the number one show in all of broadcast television is Big Bang Theory. And I looked at it. It has been for a while, yeah. yeah I looked at its uh, ratings last week, and they had 13 million people. Ooh, that's they. they everybody's uh, you know jerking off over at CBS because they got 13 million viewers. But in the old days, they go, "Can we do a little better than that?" Yeah, that would be like that would be like a crappy low end sitcom like 10 years ago. We well, got 13 million. Well, you got to realize the whole pie is being chopped up among how many different uh, outfits, you know. You've yeah. got you got the broadcast guys. You got the uh, 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 you know you've got the cable guys. You've got you've got now the streaming services. I mean, nobody even thought the streaming uh, Nobody even put into the equation of the future streaming services. And all of a sudden, you know, Netflix was sitting there trying to send out and mail out their DVDs and they decided, oh, well, why don't we, why don't we put these DVDs on a little network and just try to charge a flat price and let everybody do all you can eat. And then when they had the, the streaming going, they figured, oh, well, why don't we do an original program here? And that's how that happened. And now streaming is, you know, I mean, HBO's going, you know, why do I have to go out and... Uh, you know, yell and scream to get uh, uh, cable companies to take take HBO and to keep the cable companies happy, when in fact I'm, they're probably getting as many people watching HBO on HBO Go or HBO Now, which is the mm -hmm. paid service. So, uh, you know, I mean, I know I watch all my uh, HBO shows. I don't watch them as they broadcast, you know. So... Um, what? Isn't, uh, wasn't I'd Amazon ask you how you watch it. I, I, I'd ask you how you watch it, but you don't have HBO, do you? No, I, I got the antenna. You got the, you're got the the guy with the antenna? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Well, what is wrong with you? What, what, what is it? Are you cheap? What is it? I don't think it's the cheap. I just don't want to... I just... Dealing with AT&T or Comcast is such a nightmare. I don't even want to sign up for anything with them. Yeah. I, I, I get your point, you know. You know, it just it's a nightmare dealing with those people. Well, though I got FiOS, and um, I'm really delighted with FiOS. I don't think we have that here. Yeah, it's. It, I think you probably. I would imagine you do. Is Verizon? Do you have Verizon there? I mean, I you know, uh, uh, FiOS is all fiber. So I'm getting my all we all we've got are Comcast and AT and T, and there's a couple of new companies, but they don't serve the all areas of the city yet there's sonic and something else but not fios yeah well i um uh i pay about a uh, 222 dollars a month uh for my fiber and i still wow. and i still can't shit so uh thank you i just made a joke <laughs> 220 that's a lot yeah it's a lot but you got to realize that includes my internet uh connection which is really fast it's almost a gigabyte up and a gigabyte down which is virtually unheard of up to this point and um, you know we watch the tv so that uses the internet and you know then we got all the we have all the channels that we want and uh, that we can get uh, you know, we subscribe to Showtime and we subscribe to HBO. I have to do all this because if I didn't, my wife would divorce me. <laughs> because all she does when she comes home is she plops down on the bed because she's exhausted from work. And then she says she goes uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, um, Showtime, um, Epix. Uh, she goes to see what's on some of them, you know, that she can watch. So... You know, but I mean, it, it, it's changed the whole way. You know, the streaming thing has changed the whole way in which we watch television, and that it is somebody. What did somebody say that something like 
sixty percent of all internet traffic at night is Netflix. I've heard that, yeah. You know, so they're getting too big. What's Amazon? Wasn't Woody Allen doing something for Amazon? Yeah, he did a series for Amazon, uh, and it was okay. You know, could have been better, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, you know, and then you got Hulu, and Hulu this year won uh, the Emmy for the best uh, drama show, which was Handmaid's Tale. So you know, they're they're really grabbing all the stuff. You know, and and so this pie that once was just you know what three stations or something like that is now chopped up into hundreds and hundreds of stations. And I just noticed we've run out of time here, Lawrence. Well, that was, that was fascinating. That was fascinating. And it shall be fascinating again next week when I talk to you again. It will. Ladies and gentlemen, the countenance that is Larry Bubbles Brown. This is GabNet. The Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And hello, everybody. Welcome to our fine little uh, festival here of of nothing going on and of insanity. It's insanity because uh, insanity, the true definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result. And that's pretty much what happens here. Nothing much changes. We just keep doing the same show every night to... uh, about the same audience, sometimes less. Um, you know, so anyway, I, I, I don't know. A lot of people, it was funny, a lot of people uh, tune out uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the interviews that I do at the top of the show if they don't have video. Well, let me turn on this so girlfriend will be happy. Oh, there, now we're officially on the air. Uh, people don't, uh, don't uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, l- like it if we don't have a video of the person. I mean, whenever we have Durst on and Durst does something with me, it's like we get like a whole bunch of viewers uh, because there's some video going on. And, uh, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, I, uh, I wish I had an answer to that. Bubbles is such a Luddite that to, even if I got him a computer and I got him an Internet connection and I got him Skype, he probably wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it. So, you know, whatever. Anyway, our lines are open and we use Skype. And uh, uh, let's see here. Is anybody uh, signed on yet? Not that I know of. Not that I, not that I know of. Uh, and, but you can call if you want to. Uh, just give me a call. And here's how you do it. You go over to gabnet.net. And over on that page, it'll tell you everything you need to know about being part of the Citizens Panel and how to use Skype, and how to call us on Skype. There's even a little button you can push uh, if you have Skype on that will automatically dial us and put you on the program. So uh, you just go to gabnet.net, and everything you need to know is there. Also, our videos from the day before are there. Uh, Also, all our programs that we have here are on demand. Uh, Sometimes, if you notice, uh, if you go over there right now, all the shows for today are already up, but there's, some of them are not working yet. Uh, uh, the exchange is working now, and as soon as I upload each of the shows, you'll be able to get them on demand over there on the left side of the page. Uh, so I just sit here blabbing like crazy and, and trying not to talk about anything in particular because if I get going on something, then I somebody calls and I get interrupted with that, and then I, it's, you know. So anyway, uh, it's time for you to call. And the, the, uh, in case you don't know it, the number is, and it's a simple number that you can, uh, you can call. Uh, oh, boy, that's interesting. Huh. Boy, I, 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 every, everything screws up on me here. Okay, wait a minute. Oh, here comes Scott Boddicker. Let me add Scott to this. I have I've lost my recycle bin uh, on my desktop here, uh, which I can't figure out. Hold on a second. <laughs> Reboot. See. What? what uh, let me see. Here comes Phil. Uh, let me see. Here, there comes Phil. Let me go over to the. Uh, there we go. He's he's coming in. Hello, Phil. How are you? Hey. Uh, uh, how are you doing this evening? Uh, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm doing all right. I'm trying, but I have a problem here. I can't, uh, my my 
my whole re recycle bin just got screwed up and I can't get it to move. Huh. I'll be a, uh, I'll be a, uh, this is ridiculous. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just, I just hate it. I just hate computers and I hate the whole. No, you don't. Yes, I do. I no, really do. No, you don't. Do. You don't. love it. I hate computers. I, you know, this, this has been happening with, uh, with uh, Windows, uh, if something goes too far over to the side, like a folder or something, uh, it just hangs up there and doesn't, uh, I can't get it to move, I can't deposit anything into it, I can't read anything in it, and uh, I have to figure out a way to get that uh, all, all fixed, and I, I, I can't, so who knows. Sounds like hate speech to me. I give up, I give up. I really, I give up, I give up. No, you don't. Yeah, I mean, how do I how do I get rid of anything? Well, I guess I just go. Um, that's how I go. Okay. Well, anyway, who knows? Uh, here comes Mark. Uh, Mike. Mike, rather. Mike. Mark. Mike. Well, I added him. I added him. How come he's not? Oh boy. I go. I go. Add to group, and it doesn't work. So let me see what happens. Add to group. There I go. Uh, no, Mike's probably doing something wrong. I would imagine. I, I have no idea what that was about. Anyway, so I don't know what I'm going to do with my recycle bin. How I'm going to unrecycle. It's all a bunch of bullshit. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> you know. So, um, uh, hello, hello, Phil. How are you? I'm all right. You know, um, for one reason or another, uh, I was uh, sitting down. I started to tune into uh, uh, Damien's program, and then I woke up. It was uh, 31 minutes past the hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you said the lines are open. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so I don't know what happened. Here's a, here's a Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Patrick. Oh. There we go. There we go. There's Patrick's picture. Hello, how are you? Alive and, and just thrilled to be here. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Good. This, I, I've got my recycle bin is stuck over on the side, and I can't get into it. I can't do anything. So, I give up. I just give up on all of this. How's that? If I just give I up on. Oh. Huh? I didn't know that you recycled. You know. Uh, are you uh, separating your bottles and cans and that kind of stuff? Well, you know what I mean by the recycle bin? Uh oh, you know no, that, no. I, I was listening to all that hate speech, and, uh, you know, I, I must have missed that. Yeah, but, uh, no. I, I hate I, this. Yeah. And, I, and I can't get into the recycle bin from any other way but going to the recycle bin, and I can't get into it. So, uh, I give up. What the fuck? Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, that's uh, you know that's the way uh, computers work. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah I almost don't know what uh, you know what time it is. Uh, you know when you just wake up like that. I, I just moved it. I just got it to work. Okay. Yeah. Oh, All right. Yeah, I just learned the trick. Okay. Anyway, now I yeah. can calm down. See, All when right. something well, isn't working, you ever notice when something isn't working, you become obsessed with it? Yeah. You, you, uh, wait, a minute, wait a minute, Scott says he doesn't. Scott, you're not part of the man club, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not. Yeah, I don't care anymore. Because in the what, what about car, you know, if the car's not working or something like that, does yeah, that yeah, uh, it, it, you, upset? Yeah, do you like if the car suddenly uh, you're driving down the street and it just stops altogether? Don't you uh, get out and try and hit it with a brick or something? Well, that would upset me. That would upset. Oh me. wait a minute, hold on a second. We're being joined once again by a man who I don't think is very happy tonight, Rob Alfano, because his beloved Yankees, can I use the word tanked? Uh, no. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but hey. You know, I, you know in spite of the fact... 1995. What? There was 1995, the beginning of a dynasty. We got another one just beginning. Next year and the year after. 
Well, some people have said that the new team, the, uh, the team right now, is a team getting ready to really do well. That's, you know, it's exactly right. So it's like a whole bunch of new people. It's not the old they, folks, you know. Right. They didn't expect them to do what they did this year. Yeah. So, uh, 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 you know, you should be happy with the way they performed. I yeah. think you would have liked to get another, you know, seven games out of them. And yeah. we would have lost you for another seven nights, but that doesn't matter. It's all to good effect, you know. That's right. I want to know I feel sorry for you, and I send my respects to you and your entire family for your loss. <laughs> Isn't the uh, World Series on now? Yes. You don't rub uh, it in. Now, I think that uh, I was watching earlier. I went to the cigar loft, and uh, I had a cigar, and they had the World Series on. And it was one nothing, uh, L.A. What is it now? Is that why nobody's watching us tonight? It's like the, the lowest I've seen ever. Dodgers top the Astros three to one. It's over. It's oh, over. Okay. Well, then how come? Nope. Then no. That's then. There's no reason why nobody's watching this tonight, except that you know. Oh, you mean the game is over? No, nobody cares about this program anymore, which is possible. What? No. Oh, then the uh, the game is over tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's another World Series that I've slept through. Really? <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Well, anyway, but we do have a good uh, audio audience tonight for some reason. I, I don't know why we have a low video audience unless there's a problem with the video, but there isn't if you're watching it on, like, um, uh, 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 Saf what is it, Safari? It looks just fine, and I'm having trouble on, uh, as usual, as I always do with my feed to my Chrome. Uh, but that could be because I have too many tabs on the damn thing. I'm overstuffed on my uh, on that. But it's it's depressing when we oh now we're now we're up to more people. I get, when did the game? When was the game over? Uh, it's not. I don't know. I just looked at the app and it gave a score, final score. Oh, okay. Well, wait, you say the game isn't over. I, I yeah. didn't know. I wasn't watching. I, I, I don't know. What, I thought it came on about seven. You know, you're beginning to make it. me realize that I don't think you're of this year. I think you're actually calling us from another year. Dodgers <laughs> topped the Astros three to one in World Series game one to remain unbeaten at home this postseason. You want me, the Dodgers beat the Astros or the other way around? Dodgers beat the Astros. Dodgers beat the Astros. Okay. Fuck the Astros. Well, I used to live in Houston, so I and I and I, but I used to live in L.A. too. Yes, Patrick. I had a question for Rob since he's the baseball guy. Mm -hmm. Did the Astros become American League? What did oh, the National we, League? Ever? Yeah, four years ago, I think they switched. Okay, because I I know, and far be it for me to give a shit about my Brewers, but the Brewers are National League, and they have been for like ten years or so. Yeah. Isn't changing your league a little like changing sex? Well, yeah, something like that. But, I mean, I I know Milwaukee's team, when they were the Braves, they were National League. Yeah. So it's like they went home to the National League. But me growing up, all I knew was Houston being uh, National League. So. Yeah. Oh, gee, we did, now we just lost Rob. Uh, we're having some problems tonight. So, He's still crying about the Yankees. Well, I mean, I, I look, I feel, and we lost Mike. Man, we are having, uh, let, let's see here. Okay, Mike, you get one more chance, but if I lose you again, I'm not answering the phone. Yeah, okay, now it's working now. Yeah, well, yeah, finally. Uh, and we lost Rob. I don't know what happened to Rob. Uh, no problem on this end. I have all kinds of uh, uh, <laughs> bandwidth. Anyway, so anyway, um, let me see here. Anything, anything to talk about? First of all, uh, I, uh, um, I don't have prostate cancer, uh, Phil. Uh, oh, good. Uh, what was your PSA? Uh, it was like a 2-3. It went down. A 2-5. It went down. Good. So, but but I, I'll tell you, I've got a problem, okay? And and I want to, and I, uh, this has to do with medicine, okay, and with the way it's done. Now, you would think it, we we took another 
blood test to see if my PSA would go up or whatever, right? Six months mm-hmm. later. And it went down. So, right? So I go into him. I, he know, I, I found out the results. I went into him. And went, it went down. He said, yeah, that's good. Went down. Mm-hmm. That means there's no, you know, there's nothing going on there. And um, uh, he said, so let's uh, uh, come on in. Let me uh, let me uh, give you an examination. And he takes his sauna, uh, his, you know, his, uh, what do you call it? The thing they use when women are pregnant. Ultrasound. Ultrasound. And a stick and shoves it up my ass. And now and he, he liked it. He now he's looking at my at my prostate with this ultrasound, right? Finds little calcium deposits or something. He said, no big deal, don't worry about it. He says, no, nope, it looks like you're fine. And then then he says something strange. He says, there's only a five percent chance you've got cancer. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? That mean- you know, I guess what he wanted to do is he want he wanted if there was any legal action later on he wanted to hedge it. Well, I told him five percent, but here's the thing. Then he says to me, "So let's do another one in six months. Let's do another blood test in six months." And I said, "Well, I have my normal blood test that's coming up in in March, so we'll we'll go by that one." He says, "Fine." And I'm wondering, why do I have to come back in six months? I just, you know, it went down. We looked with the with the rectal thing, and I, and I you know, yes, exactly. Scott's doing the money thing. Before I went in there, they handed me a bill. They apparently had not sent me a bill from the last time I was in for the overage that Oxford didn't pay as usual. It was like $98. So I had to pay for it with cash because they only take cash or checks. And, of course, I didn't have my checkbook with me. In fact, I haven't had my checkbook with me for the last 10 years, for Christ's sake. You know? Uh, Who doesn't take credit cards? Right? So anyway, um, so I get the bill, right? And I'm looking at it while I'm waiting to see him. And the last time I was in, he did a sonogram uh, on my renal system. And then he did a sonogram. He went down lower and checked my pelvic area. One was $200. The other one was $250. So now I'm thinking, as he tells me, come back in six months, I'm going, why did he tell me that? And I'm thinking, he's going to either shove that thing up my ass or he's going to wand me a couple of times. And then he's going to make like double the money out of me he would get out of me if I came once a year. And why can't he just stick his finger up my ass? Why do he has, uh, does he have to turn me into an electronic puppet, for Christ's sake? You know? I think they're, uh, after what I went through with my ball, you know, with the, the, the thing I had there. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, the amount of money they want to get from you is just ridiculous. The amount of tests and the amount, I mean, everything is an, an they, they emergency. Start, they start everything running up the is clock. A problem. Yeah. It's yeah. They start running out the clock. I mean, they, yeah. they and and I understand. Look, I f- I feel for these doctors lately. They're not making what they used to. The insurance companies are fucking them over. Medicare is having to cut back, uh, and they're not they're not uh, you know. So so now when you go to a doctor, they don't say, "Hey, come back and see me next year." They say, "Come back and see me in six months." Well, you know, I I'm a hypochondriac, and going through this blood test caused me a great deal of mental anguish okay as i think it would maybe anybody here if you got a blood test and you, you something might go up or something might go down i'll tell you what went went right though my other doctor remember i told you about my cholesterol test wait a minute hold on a second let me get something here let me get a, a, a thing here because i got to read this to you remember i took that uh, the cholesterol test before last year uh, earlier in the year, and my doctor said, "Hey, it was way high. You're you're off the charts. I don't know how that's happening because you're taking the statins and all that, but you know, go back in three months and try it again." And I never went back in three months to try it again because, well, I just don't, didn't have the time. But as long as I had this test, they do a cholesterol check, so I got the cholesterol taken care of, and I I sent the new one to my doctor. Here, here's what my cholesterol was back in um, back in March. Tr- cholesterol three hundred and twenty-eight. Anybody know cholesterol levels? 
That's high. That's, That's very high. high. Triglycerides, 167. HDL cholesterol was only 30.3. It should be over 40, right? And my cholesterol, uh, my LDL cholesterol was 264.3. Ouch, right? Bad. And my cholesterol to HDL ratio was 10.18. All right. So now you got those numbers. I just, I'm sorry to bore you with those numbers. I go in, I get this blood test, right? My cholesterol is 105. Wow. That's crazy low. <laughs> HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol, for the first time in my life, is over 40 at 42, which is in the good zone. Cholesterol to HDL ratio is only 2.5, and my LDL cholesterol calculated is 49, whatever that is, triglycerides, 68, non-HDL cholesterol, 63. My, my cholesterol numbers are spectacular. They went from being deadly to spectacular. Now tell me what went wrong or what went right. And which one am I supposed to believe? Let's talk to the guy who probably knows Jeff. Oh, turn on your microphone, You're Jeff. Turn on your mic. You probably changed your medication. No. The only thing I added was Zetia, which would have aided the cholesterol-lowering medicine by only 20%. That, that's the most it, it effectively works, okay, is 20% in helping the statin along, 20%. So I would have only had a 20% drop if that were the case. That's the only medicine that has changed in all that time. So they used Mike's tests on the la on the previous cholesterol uh, uh, test, and they thought they were yours. Yeah, it's probably it. <laughs> uh, no, but I, what happened? Uh, you know what happened? And and now do we believe any of these fucking tests? I mean, let's say, and which one is wrong? This one that I just got, which is spectacular, or the old yeah. one? I'm sure my doctor's going to call me and say, "Go get another blood test." <laughs> you know, I Why mean. Not? And I'm going to tell him to go. I'm going to tell him. Could it be your diet? No, I was on. I had had topped out on my diet by then. I was uh, uh, I was still dieting, but I had lost most of the weight by then. So that that had nothing to do with it. So you tell me, you know, and you know who's doing these blood tests? I mean, are these guys doctors with lab coats, or are these just some doofuses they hire to go through the motions of doing a lab test? But all I know Pretty is that... Pretty much automated systems. I mean, I went from having lard in my veins to having gold flowing through it, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, and how do you go through that much change in six months? Okay? Something's wrong here. That's and it, I, I would like to believe it was the original test because I am on statins and why would my cholesterol be that high? But anyway, I know I'm not going to die of a heart attack now or a stroke. And I, I know I don't have prostate cancer, so what is it's going to get me? What it, you know? So old age. Yeah, I know. But I, all I know is this: <laughs> this doctor kind of pissed me off because this has come back in six months. You know, I mean, why? I had you know my my PSA went down; it didn't go up. You know, if it had gone up appreciably, yeah, I would have seen him do that. And then he, then he, you know, stuck that thing up my ass, and he got a good picture of my prostate, much better than you would with a digital examination. And he got to see everything in there, and he said he didn't see any signs of cancer. You know, just my prostate was enlarged, as it is in a guy my age, and uh, that was it. You know, he said, it's fine. He said, Did he tell you the size of your prostate? No, he, did, he, did they he, measure that? No, he didn't measure it. But he said it looked, you know, everything. Look, he says your prostate looks good. I said it doesn't look great. He says at your age, it's never going to look great, you know. But he says it looks good. He says, you well, know, you uh, with your medical report tonight, you inspired me to go to my uh, KP.org account, uh, Kaiser. Uh -huh. uh, I had a uh, I had blood taken on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I just got back uh, my PSA. Yeah, and what was it? What was it before? 
Uh, PSA, was, by the it, way, so, so people know that what we're talking about is PSA is specific uh, prostate specific antigen or something, which is uh, it it it's something that your prostate will secrete into the bloodstream at a higher number if you have like if you have the possibility of prostate cancer. Okay. Sure. So yours was what? in the past 16.9 uh back in august and that's very high extremely high although he told me he knew a guy who had a four a 78 well you know? well that guy probably had uh you know uh, cancer he had probably died from cancer he said three years <laughs> yeah. later he died that he gave him some kind of hormones and stuff that kept him alive but the guy lived to be 9 70 uh, 9, 89 years old OK, mm -hmm. so, you know, I don't know if the prostate killed him or just life did eventually. But now what is your PSA? Nine point two. See, what does that mean? It went down. I know. But what does that mean? Uh, well, you have cancer. Uh, you know that. Yeah, I, I have cancer. I have a touch of the cancer. <laughs> yeah. <Touch>. And uh, <laughs> but um, uh, the question is how aggressive it is. Right. Uh, and, you know, they did a CT scan. They did a bone scan. They found that the cancer wasn't aggressive. Uh, and, you know, because I went uh, in January of 17, I was at 11.9. And so uh, in August, I went to a 16.9. So they thought, oh, well, you know, you better get operated on immediately, if not sooner. Uh and so, uh, you, so you took an antibiotic because you thought you might have an infected prostate, and apparently, exactly. my nutritionist yeah. looked at my uh, white blood count and something else, and she said, even though it's in the normal level, she says you've experienced an increase in this uh, white blood cell count and one other thing. Uh, she says that's an indication of uh, infection. Uh, so she told me to ask to get Cipero. So I took a course of Cipero for about 30 days, and uh, I waited a few months after the uh, the Cipero, mm -hmm. and I went from 16.9 to 9.2, lower than it was uh, well, the alarm in bells uh, January. Alarm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I mean... I'm not saying that you don't have cancer, but you might, a lot of prostate cancers, and I'm talking to guys out there, and if you don't think you're going to get it, at least one out, of every, one out of every three men will get it over the age of 60, okay? Yeah. Um, and, and, but many times, it is not aggressive, and they don't treat, they don't remove the non-aggressive prostate cancer. Um, they keep an eye on it, but they don't, you know. So, you know, they could they could have gone and chopped out your prostate, and maybe you don't need to have it chopped out. You don't know yet. You well, know? I, do you think I don't maybe they don't it. understand the prostate so well? Uh, I mean, I, I have a feeling they really don't understand the prostate. Well, this PSA testing is an example. is so inexact. And, in fact, the guy who invented it uh, recently said that he thinks it's bullshit now, that it... it it does more harm than it does good because it sets off alarm bells. It makes people get prostate biopsies and right. sometimes removal of prostates and so on. When really it's only an indicator that there's something going on with your body that is setting off this alarm. It could be it could be not no more than an enlarged prostate, you know. So it, it, there's a question as to whether this test is really a good indicator of anything. You know, well, I I feel safer that he looked up there with the sonogram and took a look at the prostate and and could see it literally, rather than uh, uh, you know uh, just relying on a on a PSA test. You know, but uh, to to guys out there, a lot of you will start uh, start paying attention to the you know if you're younger and I doubt if you're listening. Boy, nobody is is watching this show tonight. I may as well just turn off the video for Christ's sake. May, or is there something wrong out there tonight? No, the picture here on Safari is just fine. Safari's so good. Uh, 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 no, I mean it's down to it's like three people. That never happens. Oh. Where where is the uh, uh, video tonight? Is on uh, just your Facebook page it's or on my uh, Facebook page? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see it. Hmm? I didn't see it? No, I didn't see it either. 
I didn't see uh, it. I, yeah, I went to your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I saw Friday's show uh, recorded. Uh, it's but here. I didn't see it, yours. It's here. Well, I'm sure it is. Refresh, I must be doing refresh, something refresh wrong. the page. It's, it's it a, always takes a, a, a certain amount of time to actually get working. Yeah. And I don't know how long that is. It could be like 10 minutes, it seems like. Really? Sometimes. Yeah. That's strange. You know, um, because I, uh, you know, I, I have it here and. Uh, it's on now. Well, wait a minute, there's, there, there I'm having a problem here. What the hell is this? There's some problem out there tonight with it. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. Ah, fuck it. I give up. You know, I really do. It just, uh, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it doesn't seem to be going out. Oh, well, I mean, there it's going out there. You know, but uh, no, it's, I, I'm have, it's having trouble tonight going out. <coughs> But for all you people out there who, who can't get it right now um, or are having trouble getting it, uh, we will, uh, it'll be up later. So you know, we're recording the damn yeah. thing. I don't know. This TV thing is getting to be, I think, too much of a problem. Yes, uh, Scott raised his hand. No, no, I, I, I think I see it now. I just had to wave my hand to see if I'm moving. It always takes a little, a little bit of delay between the live yeah. and the Facebook, but... Yeah, well, now it's not coming up. Oh, there it is. Now it's. Uh, I have it on, uh, on. What's the date today? Ten twenty-five. No, yeah, I put up the wrong date. I, uh, you put the wrong date. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Wait a second. That's tomorrow. Yeah, I'm in the future. <laughs> We're doing the show in the future. Yeah, no, now it's going out. Okay, I think maybe there was yeah. a problem going out there for a little bit. I may yeah, be wrong. Yeah, wasn't there before. But anyway. Forget it. You know, I if I have cool. to deal with this, it, we're doing this as a radio show. That's why tomorrow night I'm running video of my vacation. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> but all I'm saying to people, uh, guys out there, is they are going to frighten the shit out of you about your prostate. I don't think anybody, any p person in the medical business has terrorized me as much as the urologist I've gone to. And this guy, I get rid of him, only he's the best one. He's the nicest one, you know. And I, I, I understand why a urologist would not be the happiest guy in the world. You're spending your whole life sticking your finger up somebody's ass, you know. Uh, I'm seeing it on your Facebook uh, yeah, feed. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, but, you know, I, so I don't, underst I, I don't understand. You know, so I, but I have had some urologists that just terrorize the crap out of me. And it's a very... It's a scarier proposition for guys than I think any other kind of possibility of cancer because it's your dick, you know? And guys attach so much to their penises that the idea that your penis is now attacking you is, you know, uh, is, is a horrible prospect. So uh, all you guys, you're going to have to go through this occasion. You're going to have to take a trip to the urologist. And if you don't get the right one, he's going to be sticking things in places you didn't know things fit. You know, <laughs> the best one being the almighty cystoscopy when they stick a telescope up your dick with a camera on it. <laughs> I'm putting that one off for another uh, well, couple of weeks. Well, well, I'll the, tell you well, what. Uh, before that, I let anybody. I, I'm really a stickler, and I'm <laughs> pain in the ass as a patient. Before I let anybody do that to me, yeah. I'm going to want to know the what ifs, the wherefores, and everything else. And I still may say, "No, nah, you're not going to do that." Nah, I'm just not that agreeable. Uh, they, but do you know something? They'll always throw uh, in a second, Patrick. I'll get to. You. They'll always throw at you a scare tactic. Like my doctor went before he wanted to do. He did two cystoscopies. Before he did the first one, he went, well, you know, you might have cancer. And I said, how do you get bladder cancer? And he said, from smoking. I said, I quit smoking 25 years ago. He says, yeah, but you smoke two packs a day, and that's 40 pack years. And so they, they then scare you into it, and then he did it, and there was nothing there, of course. And then I got an infection and started running at high temperature, and they had to send me more antibiotics to take care of that only to turn around about a year later and he goes, you know, we got a funny reading on this. We've got to do another cystoscopy. And he did a second one. And this time I was more prepared for it, so it wasn't as, as uh, arduous as the first time. But, I mean, 
these are things that you as a guy do not like happening. Now, I know if I were gay, maybe I might like getting the finger up my ass, okay? But uh, not being gay, I don't enjoy it. And I'm sure that even if I was gay, I wouldn't like a camera shoved up my dick. How so, long did it take to recover after the cystoscopy? Oh, immediately. I walked right out the door. You know, the first time it, I walked right out the door, and then I came down with an infection. Mm -hmm. As a result, what, I, he, he probably you didn't did, recover he, right away. Uh, what? Phil? Phil, did you not recover right away? I haven't had it yet. Oh, uh, okay. This, this I thought is, you had a horror story. fear of going in. <laughs> oh, it's not pleasant. It's not painful, but it's not pleasant. Okay, it, it's more unpleasant when you know what's happening. You know, I don't know why anybody would want to listen to this discussion. And I, I noticed that they're not. Uh, uh, <laughs> they, they rival in, in, uh, in, in your pain. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, I, all I'm saying to guys is these are things you're going to have to do. Uh, it's important for you to know that you don't have prostate cancer, but I think they can do that a lot easier. I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what my doctor did with the sonogram and so on, I think is a perfectly acceptable way of making sure you don't have it. And, uh, you know, but I just don't know why he wanted me back in six months unless he saw something I didn't, wasn't told about, but he would tell me. And it, 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 the only reason he wants me back in six months is so he can wand me again and get another 500 bucks plus the $175 uh, consultation fee. So well, I want- Maybe he likes you. He likes my pocketbook, okay? <clears throat> you know, and it's because doctors today are not making good money. Am I right about this, Jeff? You're, you've been somewhat ancillary to the medical profession. Yes. Um, yeah, a number of doctors are having uh, where their, their, their amount of money that they make is substantially less than what, the, what they used to get. Yeah. And, and, and there used to be a lot of what I call freebies that they used to get also. Yeah. So where right. is all the money going if it's not going to the doctors? Everything is <clears throat> more expensive. Where's the money going? Government. No. Uh, I think a lot of it, uh, I, I get to use a lot of it. So I probably spend more than any one of you guys together. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, a lot of these... Uh, catheterization and surgeries and whatever are very expensive and yeah uh, they have a lot of instrumentation that that you have to do for preparation before it right and, uh, you you're com coming up to that uh, uh, with on your cancer uh, stuff yeah they, they want me to come in uh, uh, two times before the surgery I think they set it up for December 19th. I'm kind of numb to it uh, today. I got a phone call from the office, and they said, well, you got to have a pre-consultation. And uh, so uh, I think I made an appointment to have the operation done December 19th. But uh, for some reason, yeah, I, I, I just wish you, I, I wish you could go outside of Kaiser and get another opinion of all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mainly uh, well, because, mainly because, you know, I mean, you remove the prostate. It's not like they go, well, you know, it, we found, we looked at it. It didn't look that bad, but they can't put it back in. You know. Yeah. You know, at the size that mine is, and the other problems that I'm having, I, I'm ready for them to just tear it out. Well, you I know? don't think they uh, tear it out exactly, but you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it, it, rip it. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, all I'm saying is, is that. I just feel that at my age, uh, doctors are looking at me as an annuity. You know, I'm some, oh, hey, here comes, like, I looked at this, I got to tell you, it's horrible. I looked at this waiting room, okay? I was the youngest guy in there. <laughs> and, and, and this is all prostate stuff, folks. That's why, but I, I was probably the youngest guy in there. Yes, Patrick. How do you think I feel when I go to the uh, urologist? I mean, I'm only 42, and the, and usually the next oldest is well into their 70s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm looking around, and I'm going, okay. I wonder what they're thinking I'm here for, because nobody <laughs> knows about paralysis and things like that. 
So they're probably thinking, well, he must be on his way out. He must be ready to die any time now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm the youngest by 30 years at least. And it, I don't know. It's, and it's just the I get that done every year. Yeah. You know, and, it, and then they put the, um, the prongs in my nuts and attach that to the battery. The prongs in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, well, not a huge. I never heard of the what prongs. Do? Wait a minute. I they never heard of the McCain. I never heard of that. Well, <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it pounded a test that I have done. It wasn't, and, it wasn't a nurse who's saying you've been a bad boy or anything like that. <laughs> you weren't in the wrong place. There have been a few times that I've had some good looking nurses that I could joke with. And, you know, it makes it a little bit easier. But they always ask me, do you want us to numb the area up? And I tell them yes, because that's the last, that's the last time that I would want all my feeling to come back is when I have two hooks in my scrotum attached to a battery. Or, you know, well, you know what, what is the purpose of, yeah. of, 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 <laughs> of electrifying your nuts, for crying out loud? Checking the sphincter muscle. Uh, I bet that does. <laughs> yeah, that that could make it pucker. I I tell you what, my sphincter muscles going just fine hearing about it. <laughs> I don't think you need to set it off. I've got I've got the the, uh, the scope in my dick. I've got thong to my nut, and then I've got another tube about my ass. Your, doc oh, your doctor, your doctor's name is your doctor's name by any chance isn't Mengele, is it? <laughs> yes. wow. well, you know, actually, the first time I had uh, before I got before I had my spine surgery, mm -hmm. I went to the EMG test. Everybody know what that is? Uh, no, no. Where, that's where they attack, they put needles in you, a tap to a battery, and then they check the synapses of your muscles. Yeah. And, just, and that was how they determined I was losing some of my muscle um, ability. Well, anyway, I went in, and I didn't know what the test was. I didn't realize it was needles attached to wires that were attached to batteries. The gentleman that I had, the doctor, had a German accent. I'll bet. And, <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. And his last name started with an M, and I don't remember what it was. Every time I tell anybody about it, I just say Mangala because, <laughs> it, it, I mean, and he was Turkish, though, but he had, and I know there were a lot of Turkish that immigrated and, and all, but the Germans, a right. nice, heavy German <laughs> accent, you know, I, and, and it, it was just, and I remember I went back to my regular doctor and I had written up a letter and I had it translated into German mm -hmm. and a not medical symbol at the top and I said this is the shit you put me through I said here fucking read this well I I, I often felt that when we had this whole argument about uh, about uh, uh, where do you call it Guantanamo Bay and the, the uh, shall we say the uh, in, enhanced interrogation that what they should have done really was give uh, you know the guys they wanted to get information out of medical procedures without anesthetic. I mean, do give them a cystoscopy without numbing their penis first, you know, and then saying they, they tell, they'd say they'd spill all the beans. Okay. And you couldn't be accused of torture because you were saying, Oh, we we're just giving them good medical coverage, you know? So, so Patrick, didn't you tell this uh, guy that you weren't Jewish and that uh, you know in the camps you're supposed to use the yeah, Jews well, for these? Anyway, I think we're making our whole entire audience uncomfortable with this discussion. I'm Catholic, Bill. So oh, I would have. They, they look for you next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll look for you up next. Well, let's get off of this topic because I think uh, our audience is probably we have maybe three people left and uh, and 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 they're all enjoying the idea of getting their balls electrified i don't know you know trump 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 you know uh balls well, so, something happened today uh <laughs> oh something happened today 
Yeah. Uh, now, uh, well, I know that uh, Flake from Arizona says he's not going to run again. Uh, but um, but th- there was something well, well, else. He said goodbye in a very, uh, um, shall we say, uh, aggressive manner. Uh, so he he did a corker. Yeah, well, Corker also today did the same thing. I mean, you had two Republicans literally taking uh, taking uh, Trump to the woodshed. You had McCain do it the other day, you know, and he continued to do it in days after that speech he gave. And uh, it looks like the Republicans, a lot of Republicans are losing all kinds of, they don't want to be associated with Trump. They don't want to even, they're, they're leaving office because they don't want to be around to be part of this <clears throat> horrible thing that's going on the republicans now have three senators out who basically say fuck you trump that means that when they want when he wants to get any kind of money and and stuff like that where he has to have greater than 50 percent, he's not going to get it was and they're, going, and, they're, and they're still there till the end of the year that's right i think that those guys will probably still vote uh, for what they think is right, and tax uh, the tax reform. No, I think, as a is matter of fact, through. I heard tonight that the the, the speculation on Capitol Hill is they are going to vote against everything Trump wants. I, I, I they want tax reform. All of them do. Yeah, I think they'll vote for tax reform. Yeah, well, you know, um, he, here's here's a couple of things that I I'll tell you one thing I wanted to bring up as long as we were on the subject of 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 uh, uh, medical care. Uh, my wife is covered by her company. They pay a hundred percent of her medical coverage, but her medical coverage is only applies to our supplemental because there are only like about five, four people in her office that have uh, coverage, and so therefore we can't. You we have to use Medicare as our major, and that as our secondary. But her company pays the full price that they'd be paying if it wasn't a secondary. And all they're having to pay out is 20% if they pay the 20% out. Okay, well, let me finish what I'm saying. So she's been looking at plans where we would get uh, medical coverage through Medicare, you know, uh, uh, prescription drug coverage through Medicare, where our supplemental would be taken care of by like Aetna or somebody like that in a very good gold plan so that we're taking care of money-wise from penny one, okay? The only problem is her company says that's a great idea because the, it's it's about maybe $8,000 a year less than they're paying now for her insurance, her, our insurance. Uh, the only problem with it is they can't pay directly to uh, Medicare for that. They've got to give us the money and then we give it to Medicare, uh, and, uh, isn't that and, ridiculous? Yeah, and they want yeah, you to yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, want, tax, they keep they saying, no, you shouldn't retire. You should work, work, work. They're yeah, going to well, tax her on it as well, income. Well, 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 that, well, that's the problem. Now they don't tax her insurance at work no, on her income, uh, you know, on her, on her taxes at the end of the year, they don't say, Hey, your company gave you X number of dollars worth mm-hmm. of health insurance. And, uh, now you got to pay taxes on that. But yet, if we turn around, they give us the money to get the insurance, and we then buy the insurance, there's a big question as to whether we can take deduct the insurance off our taxes. If we can, then the $20,000 a year or so that we would be getting in order to pay our own insurance, um, we wouldn't have to pay taxes on. But it looks like we're probably going to have to pay taxes on it. So we've got to stick with the old plan. What, what are you saying, Scott? No. I, I think there is a way to uh, work around that. Really? It may it may not be a hundred percent, but um, yeah. I think four or five years ago, we did that at my office. Yeah. When we had a limited number of people. And, and, um, and but you, I would talk to your accountant. Well, my accountant said that he didn't think so, but uh, I, I mm-hmm. read online that parts. B and and C, uh, if you're paying them out of your pocket, you can you can write off. If they, and, if they pay her uh, cash money uh, that they tax, is that amount of payment 
greater than uh, what you'd have to pay for your supplementals. So, for instance, let's no, say they're, the supplemental. They're going to pay us. They're going to pay us for the supplementals. Just for the supplementals, supplementals not, and uh, and the you and, what they and the and, and the part D. Okay, so they're not going to give you what they were paying, which you said is about twenty grand. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and I'm just some, wondering this, if the, come to something. This would come to something like fourteen grand or something. But can we be taxed on that? That's the question. Yes, Scott. Did you say that you wanted to know if you could write off your premiums? Your the premiums you're paying on your income tax? Yeah. Is that what you asked? Yeah. I do it. You 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 take off your premiums for your insurance. Yeah, of course I do. It's so it might be legal. much. How about what? you? How about you, Phil? Do you take off your premiums? I don't know. Uh, my premiums are paid by the company, uh, so. Um, oh, okay. And, yeah. uh, no, yeah. no, you can't take it off. Then. And no, uh, th is there any? Hey, well, is there, well, how about how about you, Patrick? Uh, well, you you have course. Medicare. Jeff has Medicare, so. Hmm. Well. E even the hundred dollars you pay on your Medicare, yeah, that should be that should be tax deductible a month. Yeah, I it don't. is. I, I haven't had that, Mark. Yeah, I, I write my. I when I was uh, first retired, I was carrying myself, mm -hmm. my family, and my wife. And I was paying like eleven hundred dollars a month okay. on premiums for. The okay. insurance. Well, the group here of us uh, are all going to take up a collection. So when they come and arrest you, uh, <laughs> it's it's in the tax law. They can arrest me all they want, yeah. but you guys are being a fool if you're not writing it off. Well, uh, I I've got but, it. We've got the it. Thing, we're, we're... The thing is with medical insurance, okay? Yeah. With medical insurance, you have to exceed like uh, ten or twenty percent of your gross average income. Yeah. So most people don't write it off because you never you never get that much. Well, you have to, but oh, when, yes, right. When you're when you're paying, you know, um well my wife was only working part time, making, you know, a little bit of money. I mean well, you know, a lot of money, but but we exceeded the uh the amount that I could write off. I wrote off at I wrote off at least uh, uh seven, eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Well and I got to write off and got it all back. I don't know. It's a real problem because uh, it, it would be nice if we could if we could get it taken care of and we could get the, the all the these better medical stuff. You know, I'm tired of the fact that on this Oxford plan, which is just the normal plan, I have to spend a thousand dollars a year before they start paying a penny. Now, considering I don't have any major medical problems, the, I'm uh, I'm literally paying a thousand. You know. Everything out of my own that other twenty percent. Twenty times that because uh, you uh, only get that uh, against that thousand. You're only getting twenty percent of uh, that you're using. Yeah, uh, so it's costing you a lot more than that thousand. Well, no, it's not costing me more than that. In order to reach it, you know, from uh, in the way of insurance okay. premiums. Well, no, 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 because it's the twenty percent. That they don't pay, that then the uh, provider right, tells me I owe thousand. them. You'd have to have twenty thousand dollars in. Oh uh, yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely, in, absolutely. Yeah. But the point is that I have yet to see Oxford in all the time that I've had it pay out a penny for anything. So I, I figure I need, I, I probably could use a hernia operation. You know, I, I don't, I can probably live without it, but I could use it. Okay, I think I'm going to get it. Why not? Huh. I got to pay out money, but I want to see Oxford at least spend 10 bucks. You know, yeah, I mean, it's pretty it's drastic. Huh? My father's idea of a vacation was to check into the hospital. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I, I thought that would be a great idea. You know, you're exhausted. You want some time off. Book a room at a hospital. Right. <laughs> I, and then I spent four and a half days in the uh, hospital and I suddenly realized it's not restful. You know, yeah, they wake you up. They wake you, it, oh, you. middle of the night. They wake me up for a blood draw. That's wonderful. You know, that's that's fun. No, but I'm saying if you just went there to, it's not it's not a relaxing atmosphere. You think it is, but it isn't. Oh, uh, not 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 to derail or anything, but I I remember what the subject was with Trump today. There was something about Uranium One, Clinton, uh, the Clinton Foundation taking uh, uh, money, which they found was uh, uh, contra to 
uh, 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 Hillary's position as Secretary of State. Uh, there was uh, they're looking into the uh, uranium deal, and uh, I guess uh, you know the Clintons are are starting to pucker up uh, a little bit. Their sphincter is starting to get a little tight. Uh, well, you know, it's because it's because Trump has this vendetta against certain people. I mean, he has a vendetta against Obama, and he's trying to undo everything Obama ever did. DNC and paid. yet, yet I will tell you that he was better. Obama was better at this whole immigrant thing than Trump has been so far. He he uh, holds the record for uh, deporting people out of the United States during his term in office. Well, yeah. So maybe uh, maybe the news uh, going against Trump isn't true. That uh, that he isn't so bad. He's but, an angel. Oh, he's, yeah, he's, he's, an angel. yeah, he's an absolute angel. Let me, uh, let me, let me, let me. And, and let you me. know that dossier that they came out with? Mm -hmm. They found that the DNC not only uh, uh, paid uh, for that dossier to be uh, drawn up, but they also what found that the Obama what administration. Do, what what the, uh, the the one with the Russians and the peeing and the uh, uh, you know that they uh, supposedly uh, Trump was getting peed on and and, the, and, and how do and, we and, find out that the Democrats uh, set this up? I don't know. This was uh, I was wait, watching wait, wait, CNN wait. and that's uh, and that was uh, the news well, that they I, were I'm reporting. not going to yeah, take your right. what? It's true. It's true. It, it's true? Yeah. No, it's not. I'm just agreeing with them until he oh, shuts oh. up. No. No. And then the FBI. <laughs> 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 I love you, Scott. I love you so much. Um, uh, no, I, I'm not going to take your word for it, Phil, because every time I go look up the news, all of a sudden I find out that you only heard it out of ha the left lobe of your brain. All right, wait a minute. Um, oh, now he's going to go look it up. Uh, now he's, he's sure on his left side of his ass. I found a website called What the Fuck Just Happened Today. And, oh, oh that, uh, I'm going to rely on that as my source of news. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, well, and it says the uh, Clinton campaign and the DNC helped fund research that resulted in the Trump dossier. Uh, uh -huh. The firm behind the yeah. dossier asked the judge to block White House Intelligence Committee on obtaining bank records. Uh, so that they're trying to protect the well, DNC. Wait a minute. You, don't think, you don't think the DNC or the Clinton people would go out and, and, and try and find things about Trump? Uh, I understand. You don't think the Trump people didn't do the same thing to Clinton? Well, uh, you know, it has oh, to do with this uh, Russia no, stuff. No, well, wait a minute. So what if it has to do with the Russia stuff? That's where you look. That was the most vulnerable spot to look at. But just like well, just trying, like his, her most to... vulnerable spot was probably uh, those uh, those emails, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what they're. That's why they're trying so what, to cover so, up this email uh, thing because that's uh, going to expose wait, 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 the DNC and Clinton. The DNC and Clinton doing what? Trying uh, to get stuff. Uh, trying against, to trying create to get... a false Russia story against Trump to cover their trail. A, a false Russia story. Right. You don't think he got peed on? Nah. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> it's wishful thinking. I do. That's how you get that hair color. Yeah, that's how you get <laughs> I think it needs to be touched up. Oh, though. God. I hope people are listening tonight. This is some funny stuff. shorter and shorter as, as, you know, every day it gets a little bit shorter. Did you notice that? Yeah, no. He's, somebody's, somebody's cleaning him up, but, you know. Yeah. I've been suffering from Trump overload. I've paid. I've finally gone. I've gone off the grid. Yeah, I. I. Uh, I, I found that I'm having a hard time uh, dealing with his day to day stuff and the fact yeah. that he monopolizes the news. You know, uh, we shouldn't have to talk about him every day. We didn't have to talk about Obama every day. You know, but he always does something, or he sends out a tweet, or something, and then everybody goes uh, ballistic. Yes, uh, Patrick. Patrick. That's exactly it. Everybody goes ballistic, and you know. And I've said, and people have, you know, they they laughed at me online. I I've told people, treat them like a toddler. You know, we've all dealt with toddlers. Uh, when they want something, they scream and they scream and they scream. And if you ignore them. Eventually, they shut up. And the thing is, every news outlet, every they show every tweet that he put out. You know that he'd ham-handed. He had no 
grace in anything that he does. Um, you know, and, and it, like I've said on here weeks and weeks ago, I just basically ignore everything on the news unless he's speaking uh, on an, at an official thing, not a rally, but some official thing. Mm-hmm. Like I went to Medal of Honor ceremony yesterday. Right. Um, and, and that's about it. Because you know what? I can't change any of this shit. He's yeah. the president. And the next go around is in two years when we're going to be able to look at, uh, you know, the Congress. Right. So, right. You know, uh, I don't get all worked up about this, you, you know, on either side. And and to do so is crazy because it's just <laughs> overload. And, and you well, get sick l- of l- hearing l- about it and reading about l- it. Let me, let me uh, bring up something which happened today that wasn't Trump's doing, although it's Trump's people that did it. Uh, the FCC today passed their new rule that you do not have to have any studios in a town where you have a transmitter. In other words, this means that local broadcasting is dead. All right? Yeah. In other words, you can have a, 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 a facility in Denver that services all your radio stations across the country and it sends a signal to the various transmitters and the transmitters uh, send out the programming to the local area and the only thing they're required to have is a uh, email address where people can uh, send uh, communications to you and complaints and uh, a their public file which is a list of people who have written letters about bad things the station has done or good things that public file, which has always been on display for people, now is just on the Internet, and you can get it there. But they do not have to have studios. For instance, if you're in San Francisco and you've got a station uh, in San Francisco, it no longer has to be in San Francisco. The signal can be coming from somewhere else. Sounds like GabNet. No, it doesn't sound like GabNet. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you you're these, in New York. For, to and, begin with, uh, these sta- these state no, over the world. No, these stations have listeners. This is the internet, Phil. It's not. You <laughs> just you know don't change the subject. I'm talking about your local broadcast stations. And somebody said, you know, after what happened in Houston, Texas, can you imagine Houston, Texas, without any stations broadcasting locally during that uh, during that hurricane? It's over. over. Yeah, you mean uh, that uh, somebody from uh, uh, somebody from uh, San Francisco couldn't uh, give the news as to what was happening in in Houston? No, because uh, the the fact is that these program these programs would not be broadcasting to a specific targeted population. It would be they would be broadcasting to a general population. In other words, I can't radio- wait to hear what it sounds like. Radio has been used up until now during times of disaster as a focal point for people to call and talk and spread information and tell you what to do and where to go. Mm. And the fire department is doing this and the police departments are doing that. None of this information now would get out there because your because your programming is all coming out of Denver. It's coming out of New York. Or it'll probably come out of Denver because it's cheaper to do it Can out of Denver. Say they can't have an antenna in San Francisco and broadcast from San Jose uh, and, and and accomplish why? the same thing. Why? Yeah, they, you could, but why would but you? But they're not going to. Sense they have a they're big, not going huge to. place in the center of the country somewhere and broadcast have, have just like like Sirius, just a ton of studios. And people all in one building f- servicing the entire country rather than just if you're going to be in San Jose and broadcast to San Francisco, why not just be in San Francisco? So That's the idea right. is is get a huge building where it's cheap to do it and in the middle of the country somewhere so that you're, you know, you're because you do have to get the signal all over the country. And you probably go to a town that is not as expensive for real yeah, estate cheap and everything real estate. else, yeah, and and you know, Problems a lot you of your, and, and if you have some syndicated shows and things like that and talk shows, people can do it from their homes. You know, that's true. You can do it from your homes because yeah, yeah. if you go to that cheap market, someplace where the real estate is cheap, it's going to be fun to listen to the the local yokels they put on the air. But but what's going to happen is these these stations are all going to be serviced outside of your what we call your primary coverage area. 
absolutely. And, and what this is going to do, number one, is it's going to put out even more people out of work in the broadcast business than ever before, uh, including people who are support staff, the secretaries, the... Uh, uh, what about a sales staff? Wouldn't you want a local sales staff? Uh, I would imagine. Oh, I, I would imagine they keep a local sales staff. Although, do they? Are they going to do local advertising? You know, do they need to do local advertising, or is is it better to just be able to do you know national products and splay you the mean, signal across the country? You mean the signal that got sent to the antenna in San Francisco, for instance, can't be a different signal than what's sent to Los Angeles? Well, it, may, it, 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 it depends on what the station is. You'll probably have a talk station, and you'll have all the talk programs on that one. You'll have music stations. They'll be serving the music out of Denver. You know, right, but in not, other words, you know, in other words imagine this, Phil. You've got a transmitter, and that's it. You don't have an office. You don't have a studio in that market okay so what you've got are a bunch of transmitters just blaring out rebroadcasts of stuff that's being done somewhere else right yeah but they can't cut into a local commercial when they when they want to they have that commercial break time probably and not probably not sure they, 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 they do it with satellites all the time yeah they probably don't want to you know well, why they, would they, 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 they uh, want they're gonna part. they're gonna want to take the cheapest route possible iHeartRadio is going bankrupt. Cumulus Radio is also going bankrupt. This is a way for them to save their companies by cutting staff immensely and overhead costs. There's no real estate they have to rent in these cities. There's no staff they have to hire in these cities. I mean, it's literally going to gut the bottom out of the radio business for people to have jobs and for, for the, the radio business what? because you know if the model the current model shows that they're all going bankrupt they're going like, bankrupt yeah, because yeah. they have been bad business people not because there was any reason to go bankrupt okay they bit off more than they could chew they bought more stations than they should have bought they paid too much for they them. paid too much for them OK, it's bad business. It's not because there isn't a business out there. And uh, consequently, it's it, this is a terrible blow to the broadcasting business. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not good. In, right now, you know, I always make jokes about the fact, but try to get a hold of Skype, you know, <laughs> get, get me get me uh, support staff for Skype. You can't find it anywhere. Pretty soon you're going to say, try and get a hold of somebody who runs the signal out of this radio station, and you're going to have a hard time talking to somebody directly. Yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 the days of having to serve your community are over and done with. And that was the one thing that radio was good at. That was mm -hmm. the one thing that could support it. I mean, for years, KGO in San Francisco was successful on being just purely a local radio station. They were successful because people weren't honestly filling in the book. Well, no, but they they probably the were doing it. To, they, no, it was because the tech, the 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 methodology of the day was flawed, just as it's flawed today. You know, I can leave my uh, if you got these people meters, I can leave my radio on at home, and whatever my dog is listening to is going to get the best ratings. Okay, so you know, you're uh, moving around too. Yeah. I had a people meter for two years. And uh, 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 when you wear them, uh, you got to be moving around because if I left it uh, somewhere, uh, I would get a phone call. OK, so from... you put it on your dog's neck. OK, <laughs> well, that's that's a possibility. Yeah. But if all, I wasn't all I'm moving saying, around... all I'm saying is that KGO did very well for years and I'm sure they did very well by playing to a purely local audience. They had no syndicated shows, even when syndicated shows were the order of the day. And they did quite well for themselves. And it was an important station because it was local. You're not going to have that anymore, Phil. It's going to be gone. You know, it's over and done with. You, do you think that iHeartRadio is losing money or maybe owns nine stations in the San Francisco Bay Area? Maybe seven. Do you think they're going to take all those stations and individually run studios for them? Not on your life. They're going to take the cheapest way out. Yes, Patrick. They, now. Yes, Patrick. I, I'm curious. Um, the radio station <laughs> I listen to locally here, AM station, um, and I've said this before, it's all local talent. Yeah. 
and uh, Sean Hannity at night. Otherwise, it's all local. There, there's no syndication. Mm-hmm. And I wonder what's going to happen with that because it's part of iHeartMedia. Well, you can. You, I would say that one of the companies that will probably be creating a, uh, a nexus of all of this is going to be somebody like iHeart where they're going to say, why should we be running this station like that? It's costing us too much money. It served us before because we had to have a station there, so we had the studios, but now we don't have to have the studios anymore. And eventually they might phase that station out. I don't know. They'd be very stupid, too, if it does well, you know. And that, from what, from what I can tell, uh, it does do very well. Most of the advertisements are local businesses. And when I say local, I, I mean regional within, let's say, 90 miles of Milwaukee. Yeah. And then it moves down into Chicago. Um, so, you know, everything's local on that station. And, you know, I can see there's a few other stations locally going away because most of their programming outside of, like, the morning rush is all syndicated. Yeah. Well, I, I can't, I don't know that, for instance, you take a city like San Francisco where Phil is and, or up in Sacramento where Mike is or, you know, uh, I, I, or any, any of you people in your, in your individual towns. I can't see tomorrow this suddenly taking effect, but I can see over the next five years that yeah, it's come, take we come back five years from now and you're going to find be pretty hard put to find a studio in San Francisco or a studio in in Dallas or a studio in Sacramento, okay? Uh, and what syndicated programs do come up from all parts of the country will be fed from people's home studios to a main hub, and that hub will then be sending out all these signals to all these stations. But in that marketplace, there will be no sales force, there will be no uh, 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 support staff. There'll be no local programming. And no all. reason to tune in. The sky is falling. No, it's this isn't the sky is falling, Phil. This Come is on, two Phil. people, Rob Think and I that. are people in this business who know what's going to happen here. This is what's going to happen because business has to uh, change or it or it will completely well, no, die. No, it's, well, it's and not. why though? That's because of all the greed. They re- they relax those those laws and allowed these companies to become these behemoths and 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 buy radio stations for ridiculous amounts of money to to be so over leveraged that this is what happened. And this isn't a sky's falling scenario, Phil. This is the sky has already fallen. Uh, and these guys are going to try and get out from under the debris. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but was this created by Cl- uh, uh, Bill Clinton? No. Yep. No, yeah, oh, no, oh, it was. Oh, deregulation was, yes. Yeah. But he thought he would, what he signed was a telecommunications act, and he thought it had more to do with phone companies than anything else. But it did have a uh, an effect on deregulation of broadcasting as well, and that was an unintended consequence. Yes, Patrick? Um, somebody like me, for instance, if that happens, I don't listen to syndicated radio. I mean, right. uh, Sirius was the only one that I listened to, and one when they kicked you off the air, I was done. Yeah. So I haven't heard Sirius since then. And locally here, if we get rid of local uh, talent, I have no interest in Limbaugh or Sean Hannity. So, you know, if they go away... I won't oh, be listening uh, to you, anything. You're, you're not even going to get Sean Hannity and, and Rush because they can only be on one station in a market. You're going to get some of the most cheesy talent you've ever heard in your life doing talk shows. You know, right. or, or you're going to get music that's being fed by disc jockeys who, you know, aren't the best money can buy because, uh, again, iHeartRadio and Cumulus are going to face the bottom line on this and they're going to try and save money. Yeah, you've got the Internet. Exactly. I've, I've got my music right here. Yeah. I'm a DJ. Yeah. I listen to country, jazz, whatever I want. No, right no. I, 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 I can't tell you the last time I've listened to radio. Okay. Yeah. 
I listen to news stations like KCBS in, in the Bay Area, and it's just, you know, it's pretty much straight news. And when I want music, I put on Pandora uh, in the car. And, hey, Phil, uh, a yeah. question for you, Phil. What, what are you going to do and what's your organization going to do when Amazon starts selling carpets? Uh, hopefully I'll be the uh, Amazon supplier. <laughs> you know, they're going to need somebody to do it. They, they can't. No, they'll get cheaper. They'll, I'm sure they'll get cheaper contractors. It's it's one of those. Uh, this is where the White House under Trump in Congress is tearing apart little bits of the fabric of America. Well, you know, uh, you know what yeah. really what really is the sad part uh, in favor of a oh, multinational multi. Uh, uh, National well, Corporation. Well, what the problem, what, the problem is in broadcasting, and the sad part about it, Tim, is that in broadcasting, there are no local broadcasters, uh, independent broadcasters. People who only own that station and that station alone. They can't afford right, to exist. It. They can't that's afford true. to exist anymore against these people who've got seven stations in a market and sell based on those seven stations. They don't care what any one station makes. They care what the whole cluster makes. Okay, and if we you used to be lying. When I grew up, we wait, 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 wait a minute. Let me finish. And if you're just Absolutely. one station, if you're one station, you know, you're like I'm Alex, and I just bought a radio station, and I want to do good programming. For me to sell advertising, I can't sell my advertising for more than other guys are selling it for, and because they're doing it on a cluster basis, I can't get enough money to run my little one man operation. You know, right? So right. that, it, and now with this thing. Uh, that you don't have to have a uh, studio in the town where your transmitter is. I'm sorry, it's all over, you know. And the big boys win. It's, it's kind of like the the corporate farms taking over the farms. I, I don't is, there, is this going to help? Is this going to help Sinclair? Too? You, you, hey, you oh, socialists ought to love this. You know, I don't know that, you know, uh, know that no, the it's big corporate, boys it's corporate welfare. Win. It's it's socialism for the corporations, what it is. Well, 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 I'll tell you what's worse about this is is that what it's going to do is it's going to allow iHeartRadio, Cumulus, and a couple of other companies, which are coming close to bankruptcy, uh, to uh, just um, uh, put survive. Everything in, survive, put everything in one place. But what you're doing is who you're helping to survive are people who have been financially irresponsible in the first right. place, and Absolutely. there's nothing to say Absolutely. that they won't continue their hubris of not being responsible financially. No, that's the problem, you know. And those airways belong to us, the citizens. Not anymore. Not, not anymore. anymore. I, I know, but they should. They I'll tell should. you, I learned years ago that wasn't true. I, I was working at ABC at the time, and I had a very good boss. He was a nice guy. And I was in the general manager's office, and we were having an argument about something. And, of course, I, those were my hippie days. And I looked at him and he said, do not forget that according to the Federal Communications Act of 1934 or 36, what was it? 34. I can't remember now. 34. Uh, mm -hmm. the, it, it starts off in the preamble by saying the airwaves belong to the people. It was probably the most left-wing piece of writing that we have anywhere codified in the, in, in the government. And that was, and that was, wait a minute, that was the, 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 the watchword for broadcasting. The airways belonged to the people. All the FCC was, was they were an ombudsman who watched over what the people owned to make sure they operated properly. And they worked it in It used to be a big deal to get your okay. right license renewed, oh, yeah, right? But, yeah, local uh, yeah, yeah, you had to work at it. But anyway, let me finish right. with what, what I was saying. Uh, so I looked at him and I said, just remember... The airways belong to the people. And he looked back at me and he said, I have a correction. The airwaves belong to ABC. <laughs> and I suddenly realized, uh-oh, yeah, he's probably right. <laughs> you know, uh, we had long ago forgotten that the airwaves belong to the people. So what are you going to do, you know? Um, well, power to the people. Power to the people. Yeah, well, uh, it, it, it's, it's, you know, and that's not to say that radio probably is going to be existing for very much longer anyway. I mean, the Internet has so dispersed the audience. I mean, yeah. it, uh, broadcasting, including Internet broadcasting, isn't going to make anybody money, okay? Right. 
but I, I think it's going to, I think moving the studios and taking the rest of whatever's left of the local flavor out of the radio stations is going to make it that less or that much more irrelevant. And it's going to be the final nail in radio's coffin. They're going to f- have to find another use for radio. Because if you're going to start broadcasting out of a central location somewhere in this country, and you don't even have people who know how to pronounce the the, the, the local names of towns, yeah, what do you have? You know, what do you have? Yeah, yeah, you'll be hearing an announcer in Denver calling it San I, Rafael, I, California. I yeah. don't think yeah. that it's going to change one iota. If you have uh, people Phil, that are in, Phil, in one it, place, take it from two people here who have been in broadcasting, unlike you. You know, you've de- hey, you've I had a professional career in broadcasting. I, you even paid me, uh, 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 on, and, and so I actually got all right, all uh, right. But what I'm saying is, you're talking to two bro- you're talking to two broadcast professionals who are telling you this is not good. You know, this is just not good. It's not. And who's it not good for? Forget about it not being good for me. Hey, I'm never going to work in this in the radio business again. It's terrible for the public. It's terrible mm-hmm. for the people who broadcasting has served all these years because if you've got somebody doing all their programming out of Denver, let's say, and splaying it across the country to all these transmitters that have no studio attached to them, you also have an organization that doesn't care what the people in any of those cities think or need. Well, I I think that, you know, that this has been coming for a long time. You know, uh, what is it, what was it called when you did all of these, uh, e- even with music, you, you, you did your whole thing, your whole four hour show in, 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 in 45 minutes, voice tracking. It, that, 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 that was the beginning of the end of, of it. That was the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and, what, what and made that, what I'll tell you what made do, that possible, what made that possible. Uh, to tell you the truth, what made that all possible was uh, technology. Because when I first went to work at WPLJ in New York, uh, they had a a system where they had like something like five stations across the country, seven O&Os, FMs. And each one had their own music host. And that music host would do tapes, voice tracking for all the other stations. And they built these machines banks of tapes tape machines these were all tapes that would start and then another one would start with the music on it and then another one would start and then when it was time for that local guy he came in and did his show live yeah and that was the first automation that i ever saw well that didn't last very long and after a while they started hiring people bringing in people like me and jim kerr and uh, a whole bunch of other people and we started doing uh, live programming, and then the, the tape machines sat there, and we just looked at them like they were old fossils. That was only because the technology wasn't good enough. It was too clumsy, but it's not clumsy anymore. That's right. You know. So th- this is, uh, you know, this is just the next well, step uh, in doing it's, something. Ask, it's all uh, form and no substance. Uh, still. Ask Mr. That's voice Track, Rob. You used I'm to wait a minute, Hold on a second. You used to voice track it. That's serious, right? Yeah, and it sounded great. But the problem is it's vapid. And so it's all form and no substance. Here's a, here's an example. And I'm going to uh, and I'm going to give this to you in is and believe me when I tell you this is the truth. If you're doing a show and you came in out of the rain and sat down in that studio and started doing your show it would have a different sound to it, a different flavor to it than it would if you came in on a sunny day. Absolutely. Okay? You're human. Because you bring the atmosphere of the outside inside. So now if I'm doing a show to New York and it's raining, they can feel me feeling the rain. But when Rob pre-records it for voice tracking on Sirius, you don't get that feeling. And believe me, it, it uh, it's nothing palpable I can put my finger on, but there's definitely something you feel when you hear somebody who is live and is experiencing the day. Am I right, Rob? Absolutely. There's, there's you know, you can't, you can't, uh, 
you can't there's certain things you can't manufacture. You can put together a really tight show and maybe be funny if that's what you are, mm-hmm. you know, and run a, you know, and, and bring things together with the automation software that makes it sound like you're like you're doing your job really well, but you can't bring, you can't bring that. Like, I don't know. You can't share the experience of the guy riding down the street, listening to you. And maybe he's got a There's, he's in a horrible thunderstorm. Exactly. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. Uh, 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 when I uh, uh, first went over to, um, what was I was going to say now? There was, there was a point I was going to make that was attendant to that, and I just it, I lost it completely. Uh, but it, it, it's important to have that, that aspect of, of feeling that it's live. I often said that also your program is going to be the subtotal of of the feeling in the hallways of the radio station which you work. So if there's a good spirit in the radio station, the shows are going to sound spirited. Uh, we're only humans and that's and, and but but the to react to a uh, to a pre-recorded voice at a different time is uh, it it just doesn't work as well. Um, that, that's that's probably why Saturday Night Live still gets quite a few viewers. It's live. Well, no, it wasn't live on the West Coast. It is now, though. They're they're showing it live on the West Coast. They show it at uh, eight thirty oh, at night. I think it makes a difference, Sammy. And unfortunately, the twenty four seven news cycle. A lot of the news broadcasts are live too. Not not all of them, but a lot of them on cable. Uh, uh, all of the newscasts are live. Well, I think some are recorded slightly, but yeah, most no, of them are live. No, and all, they make them pretty compelling compared yeah, to they're all, they're all live except for maybe some documentary or something. New like York that. One. A lot of the news broadcasts are live. Oh, I, I got to turn something down. I, uh, some what, what do you think up. about O'Reilly being mad at God now? <laughs> well, well, we're changing topics here. You know, know. We're changing topics. Uh, and, and this is one that's very close to my heart. Uh, I just think that... Uh, you know, oh, when I when I years ago when I worked in San Francisco at uh, Clear Channel for a short time, uh, uh, you know, I uh, it was bad enough that you had everybody from every radio station that they owned all in the same building because I was so used to competing against the guy across town, and now he's in the studio next to me. You know. Yeah, I worked at a cluster, and the station I worked at had a great book. The station next door had a shitty book. And we couldn't celebrate. That's right. You yeah. couldn't celebrate. You know, because you felt and, like and, you know. And every and every break, I would come out in the hallway, and so would the guy in the studio next to me. It just happened to be Jim Lang, and and uh, we would talk a little bit. And Jim, we love politics because he was really a lefty. And then uh, I said, "Well, I got to go back. We got to go back to our individual studios now and beat our brains out." You know, it, it just it just doesn't work. It's all kind of slowly imploded because of the, uh, of all these people buying all these radio stations. Uh, and uh, now it's coming home to roost that the FCC under Trump thinks this is a good idea. No, the good idea would be to make these people get rid of some of their radio stations and get back to some independent stations and yep. serve those local communities. But this yep. isn't going to improve local communities. This is only going to harm them a great deal. That's right. That's right. So That's right. They should make these companies go bankrupt and sell these stations for pennies on the dollar for what they're really worth and then have a local team go in there, a mom and pop like it used to be, and, the, and they can afford the radio station, and so they don't have to make buco crazy bucks just to break even. Yeah, exactly. Like the old days. Well, I mean, also, the, 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 the bottom line on this whole thing uh, is that you're not going to have uh, a, a local station dealing with people's local needs and speaking to that local community. You're not going to feel anybody speaking especially to you. And, and yeah. Another thing the local stations also did was provided a way for you to run for office locally and not spend tens of thousands of dollars because you could go on the local radio stations and TV stations. So you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's pretty it's pretty terrible all the way around, you know, and uh, and I don't I don't know what we're going to what we're going to do about it. Uh, but uh, there's no way to, to stop this uh, this whole thing from happening. Uh, 
and it's it's going to be terrible. It's just it's not going to be a pretty thing, and a lot of us won't be around to see it really play itself I, out. You know, and I don't know that even if you had Democrats in the White House, that they would really give a shit to do anything about it. They don't give a shit because they don't know the radio business and they don't know the dynamics of it, and it's it's really terrible. It's really terrible. But anyway, I you know tearing apart the local fabric of of America. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, so. yeah. Now, now, where every town doesn't have its own original ice cream store any longer, you know, they all got Baskin we, Robbins, you know. Rod, Rod Serling worked at our radio station years and years and years ago. And now every radio station is Rod Serling. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Phil. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Rob. Uh, thank you, uh, 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 Scott. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Jeff. And thank you to Tim. Uh, it's uh, really nice having you here this evening as we bemoan the death of radio as we know it. And uh, don't say that it isn't a clarion call because it, 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 this is the way it's going to be. Anyway, thank you all. Wave goodbye, would you? That would be awfully nice. Thanks. That would be yeah, good. good. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we say goodbye to them. And uh, they're all hanging up on me, and I'm going to hang up on them so that we can get ready for the next show because I have to then sign myself off here so that Jack can use the, uh, the uh, facilities. Hey, listen, it's been really nice having you here tonight. Hope we didn't depress you with too much of this. Uh, by the end of the show, we had some people watching it. Uh, who knows if we're going to... You know, if it's worth doing the video every night, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder. Anyway, eh, I just get depressed. As I get older, I get more depressed. Okay. Anyway, Jack's next with Amy on the intersection, and it's followed at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.